Okay, in this video, we're going to build a fairly simple Windows Forms application in C Sharp that generates a pulse width modulated waveform or PWM signal from a simple sine wave. And you can see here we've got a one cycle of a simple 60 hertz sine wave and the resulting PWM signal generated from that sine wave. Now, if you're not familiar with PWM, um, I recently did another video here with on power system inverters that explains in de more detail what a PWM signal is. Uh, but here what we're going to do is just use a simple sine wave and also we're going to generate a sine wave with some ha some harmonics and see how that PWM signal changes to give you a visual idea of what PWM is. Now in this video, we're going to generate, let me start up the application we're going to generate so you can see what, uh, what this is all about. Now here's the application we're going to build. It's fairly simple. I've got a Windows form and I've got a chart here where I'm going to plot some things. I've got three checkboxes and two trackbars or sliders and then two buttons. And the way this is going to work is I will click this do PWM and it will plot a sine wave that I generated internally and the resulting pulse width modulated waveform. Now these checkboxes um, allow you to change what's plotted. So here I can get rid of the sine wave or add the sine wave back. Uh, here I can get rid of the carrier and here I can get rid of the pulse width modulated waveform. Uh, now briefly to explain what PWM is, here's the sine wave and the way we generate a PWM signal is for every point in time we compare the value of the sine wave with this carrier, what's called a carrier, it's a triangle wave, and it gives you a linear comparison, a linear value to compare with. So wherever the value of the sine wave is greater than the value of the triangle wave, the output, the PWM output is one. And wherever the value of the sine wave is less than the triangle wave, the output is zero. Now, if we superimpose the PWM signal, you can see that where the sine wave is greater at just about every point than the triangle wave, the output, this red PWM signal, is 1. In other words, the duty cycle is maximum. Down here, where the sine wave value is less than the carrier at just about every point, the value of the PWM is 0. And you can see just where this triangle is, is the same or a little bit greater than the sine wave, you get a blip of one, but otherwise it's zero. And then in between the, the duty cycle or the widths of these pulses is linearly proportional to the value of the sine wave. So if you get rid of this carrier, you can see that the width of the uh, pulses of this PWM signal, also called the duty cycle, in, is an encoded um, representation of the value of the sine wave. So the duty cycle is maximum here where the, where the sine wave is maximum and the duty cycle is minimum here where the sine wave is minimum. Now the other thing we're going to do here is this is a, a pure sinusoid but we're also going to add in a second harmonic. So this is one cycle of a 60 hertz sine wave and I'm going to add a 120 hertz or second harmonic component and you will see the sine wave get distorted because I'm adding uh, a second harmonic. And as I increase the magnitude of the second harmonic I'm adding, you can see the wave gets distorted. And the resulting PWM signal changes. And the reason why is because here the sine wave is always greater than the value of the carrier, because there's the carrier, so it's going to be a solid one. And here it's always less than the value of the carrier, so it's going to be a solid zero. Now I can also vary the magnitude of the carrier. And you can see as I change the carrier, the resulting PWM signal changes also. So you can, you can get a visual idea of how the carrier magnitude and the, the sine wave component affects the output of the PWM signal. Okay, So again, the duty cycle of this PWM signal encodes the value of this sine wave. So as you can see here, um, I'm basically going to be generating in the, in the application, I'm going to be generating a triangle wave, I'm going to be generating a sine wave, 
and I'm going to be calculating a PWM from that. And I'm also going to be generating a second harmonic component that I'm going to add to this sine wave. And I'm also going to be varying the magnitude of the carrier. So let's get out of here and look at the code in C Sharp. Okay, now we've got a brand new Windows Forms application. And I'm going to fairly quickly set this up uh, similar to the way I had it. Uh, I'm going to add a chart so I can chart everything. I've got a couple of buttons. I'm going to add a button here. I'm going to add another button here for the exit. And I've got um, checkboxes. Got a checkbox here, another one here, and another one here. Line those guys up. And that will be to determine which ones are going to get plotted. And I've got a couple track bars. Track bar. Got this one here, and I will first set this up. Orientation, I'll do vertical. And I want a maximum of five and a minimum of zero. So I can just um, copy and paste that to get the second one. I'm not going to put the labels on here, but those are track bar one, track bar two. And you can add labels if you want. This checkbox, I'll just change the um, text to sign, text to sign, that's carrier, and then this will be PWM. And now I've got these two buttons. Um, I will rename this to do PWM. And this one will be exit. And now all I need to do is set up the series for this chart. And I'm going to have three series. And I will name the first one as sine. And this chart type will be a line. And I'll add another one. And that will be carrier and it will be a line and I'll add another one and that will be PWM and that will be a line okay so now we want to uh, initiate event handlers for each of these the buttons so we'll double click on that and then we will double click on the exit button Double click on this track bar and double click on this track bar. And we want to have for the sine wave and for the carrier and for the PWM. Okay, so now we've got the event handlers all set up and now we can just start our coding. So now the code I have here in C sharp is fairly simple. And what really does the work are these two methods right here. One is generate PWM and one is plot it. Now, um, the rest of these are basically very simple event handlers for each of the buttons and the checkboxes and the track bars. So we won't focus on those now, but really these two methods are what does the work. Now, this generate PWM is a fairly simple method that generates the sine wave, the carrier or the triangle wave, the second harmonic sine wave, and it also calculates the resulting pulse width modulated waveform. Okay, Most of this code in here that I'm highlighting is for the chart uh, to set up the chart. So we'll ignore that right now. But here in the front, when I call this generate PWM, it basically develops and generates internally the sine wave, the carrier, the second harmonic. Now, to do that, we're going to use one of my favorite math libraries, and that's MathNet. Now, uh, I've mentioned that before, and it's MathNet Numerics. And you can see I've got a using statement here, MathNet Numerics. And to get MathNet, um, 
you go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, and you just search um, online and it will automatically load it. Just uh, select it and it will uh, install it. And then you need two using statements, using MathNet and using MathNet.Numerics. Now we need those because they have some great um, methods in there, functions that will generate sine waves and triangle waves with very little effort. Okay, now we've got the Windows form and the event handler set up. Uh, we'll start the code. Now what I've done is taken the event handlers and put them in a region to move them out of the way temporarily. And like I said, there's two methods we need to generate. One is to generate all of the waveforms and calculate the PWM, and the other is to plot it. So what I'll do is I will copy and paste my existing code for the generate PWM uh, method, and I've broken, the, broken it into regions to make it a little bit clearer. Now, there's basically these four parts of the method for generate PWM. The first is we calculate the amplitudes of the two signals, the second harmonic and the carrier, from the trackbar values. And you recall we set the maximum trackbar value to 5 and the minimum to 0. So here we're setting up for the second harmonic sine wave. It can go from 0 to 0 0.5 because I'm multiplying times 0.1. So I can inject a second harmonic of, uh, with a magnitude of 0 to 0 0.5 as we slide the trackbar. The same with the carrier. But the carrier, I'm going to, uh, I can adjust it from 1 to 1.5 because the trackbar value maximum is, is 5 times 0 0.1 and I can add that to 1 or if the trackbar is 0, it's just 1. So very simple. Um, magnitude calculation for the, the second harmonic in the carrier. Now, this next region, we're generating the waveforms for the, the 60 hertz sine wave, the second harmonic, and the carrier, the triangle wave. And we're using the MathNet generate method, or class, and you can directly generate a sinusoid or a triangle. There's two methods to directly generate those waveforms. And if you go over the IntelliSense, you can see you're basically generating an array of doubles. And the input is the number of samples. And we've got, I'll show you later the um, setting up the variables for this. But basically, number of samples, the samples per second, and the frequency of the sine wave. And we've defined that. We'll define that later on. But these are the basic values you need. And I'm going to have an amplitude of 1. Same thing for the second harmonic. The number of samples, and that is the, um, basically the length of the, um, of the generated waveform, how many samples in length. And then the sample rate, samples per second. And then the frequency, which is 2 times the frequency of the sine wave. In this case, it will be 2 times 60. And then the amplitude, which is sine 2a, which we just calculated. Okay, up here. So very simple. You just um, fill in the blanks for the uh, sinusoid and the triangle. And again, with the triangle, the, the total length of the um, array of the generated triangle is the number of samples. And then um, the, for the positive part of the triangle and the negative part of the triangle. And the same thing with the triangle wave, the carrier. You basically fill in the blanks, the total length of the signal is the number of total number of samples that we're going to take and the plus and minus parts of the triangle wave will last uh, there will be equal uh, lengths which is the total period of the carrier the total number of samples divided by two for both and then the magnitude is this carrier amplitude plus and minus um, that we've defined we just defined here carrier a so again, very simple. You just fill in the blanks for the generate methods. Um, now, the next thing I mentioned before, we need to set up the chart areas. And here I'm just setting up the minimum and maximum values for the x-axis. And I want to go from 0 to the plot time, which we will define later. 
And then uh, the all important round axis values, which basically does that. It takes the x axis values and rounds them to make them a little bit uh, easier to see. And then the label tile format, uh, F4 to make the numbers be go to fixed four decimal points. And then I just changed the line colors for the x axis to be light blue so they're not as obvious. Now you can you can pause the video and, and copy those down, but it's basically just setting up the uh, chart. And here is where we do the actual work to calculate the pulse width modulated waveform. And we just do for each sample in the total number of samples, for int i equals zero to the number of samples, to each value we add the second harmonic component, if any. So sine equals sine plus sine of the uh, second harmonic, and you just add those together. And then we define the time associated with each sample. So T of I, and we take the sample divided by the samples per second, and that gives you how many seconds per sample. One over samples per second is seconds per sample. So now we've got a, a value and a time associated with each sample. So here's where we calculate the PWM. Recall I said if the sign, the value of the sign is greater than the value of the carrier, then set the PWM for that sample equal to one. Else, set it to zero, okay? A very simple calculation of PWM is just um, whether the sign value at that point is greater than the carrier or not, all right? And that's basically it. That's all you need to do to generate the signals. And then the next thing we do is we plot it. So we've calculated everything, we plot it, and now we're going to generate the plot method. Now I'll copy and paste the plot method. And here I've got public void plot it. And what I need to do first is every time I call this plot it method, I want to clear the points for the sign, the carrier, and the PWM. Recall we set up three series. So every time we click a, a checkbox or we try to plot, we want to first clear all of the existing points for each of the um, for each of the series so that we can replot them, so we don't start building up uh, points. And here we just go through for the total number of samples that we're going to use. Uh, if the check if each checkbox is checked, that defines whether we will plot that uh, particular series. So if checkbox one is checked, then chart one series the sine wave. We go points dot add x y, and the points are the time and the value of the sine wave. So a very simple uh, plotting that sine wave. If checkbox two is checked, then the second series, which is the carrier, we do the same thing. We put in the time and the value of the carrier. And if checkbox three is checked, we do the same thing for the PWM signal. Uh, we do uh, we add the time and also the value of the PWM, and that's it. Very simple uh, method to do the uh, plot. So now that we've got the code, all we need to do is to go back and define our variables and our arrays that we're using. And I will again copy and paste uh, what I've done previously. And if you want to copy it, you can just pause the video and go through. It's um, I've got basically a group of variables I need to define to make these two methods work. And I'll go through briefly what each one is. Um, here um, I'm doing static double. The frequency of the sine wave is 60. Frequency of the carrier is I just picked a sample rate of 33, uh, a frequency of 33 times the basic frequency of the sine wave. So 33 times 60. You can pick what you want, but I just chose that. And then the, remember we set up the uh, amplitude of the second harmonic and say amplitude of the carrier. We're just defining that. Uh, we're defining the simulation time in cycles. And you saw when I did the, um, when I ran it, I just did one cycle of the 60 hertz. Uh, sim time in seconds is the sim, sim time in cycles divided by the frequency of the sine wave. Uh, number of samples, I just chose 10,000 samples. 
So I'm breaking everything up into 10,000 10, samples. And then samples per second is the number of samples divided by the simulation time in seconds. And I cast that to an integer. So just setting up the basic variables. Um, and then I've got the carrier period in seconds is one over the frequency of the carrier. And then the carrier period in samples is the carrier period in seconds divided by the samples per second and cast that to an integer. And then a few plot parameters. Um, how many cycles of the fundamental do we want to plot? And I'm just choosing one. Plot time is that number of cycles divided by the frequency. And here, plot samples, you can you should just comment this out. We're not using it. Uh, I just put that in to test something. So here you basically got the variables defined. And the, the last thing I need to do is define the various arrays. For example, we set up arrays to generate the um, to generate the signals. So here is the arrays, the array of doubles for the sine wave. And I say double sine equals new double. And that's how many samples, how many elements are in the array. Same thing with the second harmonic. Same thing with the carrier. Same thing with the time associated with each sample. And the PWM signal, which we generated. So at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. So now that we've got our code um, to do the work, we just have to run into the event handlers and set them up to call these methods. So it's fairly straightforward. Now button one click is basically the do PWM button. So all we need to do is call generate PWM. Okay, and it's this button here. Do PWM, you just call generate PWM. Now this button two is just the exit button. So what we need to do is type vacation.exit. And that's taken care of. Uh, track bars will wait for a second. First, we'll do the check boxes. Now with the check boxes, all you need to do is run plot it because these this event happens anytime you change uh, whether the box is checked or not. So each time you, you click or unclick a checkbox, it will run plot it. And that will determine, like we said, it will determine the state of the checkboxes and plot um, in real time as you check the boxes. So you do that for each of these, just run plot it, and you're all set to go. Now the last thing you need to do is the track bars. And again, the track bars are very easy. You just run generate PWM. And that method checks the, the state of the trackbar and um, does the calculations. So now we're all set. We can run it. And here we've got our form. And we can do PWM and check. Here's our sine wave. Here's our carrier. And here's our PWM. And then we can adjust, add the second harmonic. And we can add that we can change the carrier magnitude. And you can see the PWM changing. So that's about it. Fairly simple application. And you can modify this as you'd like to um, get a better visualization of how the PWM works. So I hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day.